This video explains the concept of modern portfolio theory without the mouse and with the keyboard shortcuts in Microsoft Word. Please subscribe to this channel, hit the like button, share this video with friends and family. Let's get into the video. Microsoft Word is the fifth thing on my taskbar. To open it, I press Windows Key 5. Press Enter. Control E as an echo to center it. Control V as in brawl, U as in uniform. We're going to call this modern port. Call that 4 to exit out of that. The modern portfolio theory. And then to do bullet points, I have it as the fifth thing on my quick access toolbar, so I can press Alt 5. Alt N N U B. To make page numbers, all J's and Juliet, H's and Hotel, C's and Charlie to get out of that. All right, so the theory behind modern portfolio theory, and this video is going to be about the theory. This is not an explicit video with explicit instructions on how to implement the theory. I did that in a previous video in Python. Please watch that video, it's on my channel if you haven't already done so. But today is more about the mathematical theory behind modern portfolio theory as opposed to executing it in Python or Excel. The first key takeaway is assets should be evaluated not only for their individual characteristics but also for their combined effect on a portfolio as a whole I can do spell check it looks good I'll give a reason why the reason is because diversification can reduce risk without reducing return. And so let's start with the math. First of all, the weighted average, the return, expected return of a portfolio is just the weighted average of the expected return of the things in it. Let's consider a two asset portfolio. We'll do expected return, troll equal sign to get to subscripts. Control equal sign to get back. Expected return of a two asset portfolio, asset alpha and asset bravo, is the expected return control equal sign of asset alpha times the weight, the portfolio weight in alpha. Plus expected return of asset Bravo times the weight in asset Bravo. This is, and I'll write this, this is expected return for a two asset portfolio however the standard deviation of a two asset portfolio is not a weighted average so let me see if I can find that with the symbol alt n is in November U is in uniform and here it is sigma sigma squared 
and it just changed the symbol. So, control equal sign. We'll do do alpha comma bravo sigma squared of acid alpha comma bravo we'll put that in parentheses to make it clear control z is in zulu to undo that So the variance of a two asset portfolio. Control shift plus. It's the variance of the returns of asset A times the square of the weight in asset A. Plus, then I'll copy and paste this, right? All right, so the Variance of a two asset portfolio is the variance of asset alpha times the square of the weight of asset alpha times the variance of the returns of asset bravo times the square of the weight held in asset bravo plus two weight alpha weight bravo sigma alpha Sigma Bravo times, and let's see if I can find the symbol for correlation coefficient. Here it is, Rho Alpha Comma. of a two-asset portfolio. So the idea here is very simply that the, ret the expected return is a weighted average, but the, the variance is not. There's this idea of correlation coefficient in there, which is the row value. And that row value represents the strength of the directional relationship between the returns of asset alpha and asset bravo. So if you have correlation coefficients always range from negative one to positive one. If you have two assets, Alpha and Bravo, that are perfectly negatively correlated, the correlation coefficient of the returns is negative one, you can create a risk-free portfolio. The other way you can create a risk-free portfolio is if asset Alpha and Bravo both have a correlation coefficient of returns with respect to each other of positive one, perfectly correlated. Then in that case, you would go, long alpha, short bravo, or vice versa, 
uh, long Bravo short asset alpha. And so those are two ways where you can get a risk-free portfolio. And so the key here is you can reduce your risk without reducing your return. And it's important to keep that in mind. And let me show you what this actually looks like in practice. Open my file explorer, Windows key one, picture, arrow over, and I will go to graphs. And you can see here, this is what it actually looks like. There's the risky investment set, which is the blue curve, different weights of two assets, expected return on the vertical axis, standard deviation on the horizontal axis. While we're at it, Alt-Tab to get back to the file explorer, Alt-F4 to close it. It's an important shortcut to know. And you can basically figure out a weight of owning Asset Alpha and Bravo that gives you the highest expected return with the lowest standard deviation. And so you can maximize what's called the Sharpe Ratio. Sharpe Ratio equals Return minus risk-free rate. Divided by standard deviation. So that's the sharp ratio of an asset or portfolio of assets. And so the idea here, it's a measure of risk-adjusted return to maximize risk adjusted returns, you can have a diversified portfolio, both Asset Alpha and Asset Bravo. And then this orange line is called the, the capital allocation line or the capital market line. And that represents the risk-free rate. You can borrow and lend at the risk-free rate and lever and delever the portfolio that way. So all of the portfolios along the orange line have the same sharp ratio if you if you want to get beyond the orange dot on on top of the blue curve that's called the tangency portfolio the portfolio that has the highest expected sharp ratio if you want to get to the right to the upper right of the orange line you'd short sell the risk-free asset short sell treasury bills to get out there and if you want to delever the portfolio, you don't want to put your whole portfolio into the tangency portfolio. You could uh, lend at the risk-free rate and get down the down the line towards the lower left. So that's how you do it. And so the key here to know is that diversification can reduce risk without reducing return. Returns are a weighted average. Risk is not a weighted average. And so you have to consider the combined effect of on your portfolio as a whole when you're looking when you're looking at these different assets and how much to own of each take this knowledge into the marketplace to better understand modern portfolio theory have a great day thank you for watching this video please subscribe to my youtube channel hit the notification bell hit the like button leave a comment below and please buy my books the links to those will be in the description of this video.